It's a great frog because it's got gamagatsu hooks, and I change out every frog I can with gamagatsu hooks if the frog itself will allow me to. And uh, it, it, it just it skips so nice. I mean, you can get that thing and get it way up underneath cover, and that's where this rod is really nice because it's got a softer tip to it and allows you to skip super easy. Um, and then it, you know it's a great walking frog, and uh, the uh, they've got a popping frog which also spits water when you're walking it. So that's that's a great frog. And I know a lot of tournament guys really dig that spro frog. Um, Bobby Barracks that we talked about earlier, his uh, SP stands for snag proof. Um, so his frog is just a great all around frog. I also like the original tournament frog. This is just the original tournament frog uh, I got on here right now. And um, I just tied this one on because I wanted to show you a couple tricks I'm going to modify for you guys. Um, but that's this, this style frog right here, the original um, snag proof tournament frog is, is the one I've actually won most of my money with that and the Bobby Barracks perfect frog. Um, Bobby Barracks perfect frog, it's got a little bit of a chamber in it that um, will kick the water out of the bait so it doesn't sink, um, which is kind of nice. Ish's fat frog has the same um, chamber in it. And uh, the, the thing about Ish's frog is if you're fishing really heavy mat, mats and, and, and thick vegetation, like at Gunnersville or something in, in the fall or, or late summer, you can throw it over the thickest stuff and it just really wakes on the surface and, and, and gets the fish to notice it. Um, and then he's also got a popping frog, which is kind of neat because you can get over those mats and then get in a little bit of an open water and it really just spits a lot of water. Um, let's see here, kind of got this all mixed up. I'm gonna go down here to the popping furbit since we're talking about heavy mats. The popping furbit frog, I probably should be showing you these while I'm talking about them. <laughs> so here's the, here's the popping furbit frog. And you'll notice it's got a big mouth to it. Um, this sucker is probably the loudest frog on the planet. You notice a little spinnerbait blade on it. I like this when you get on a frog bite in practice and then it decides to blow 15 miles an hour and you're like, what do I do? This frog will work for you. You can pop it and just let it kind of drift. As long as it's drifting or sitting there moving in the wind, that blade will be turning. And uh, you can do it in open water, you can throw it over mats. Um, but I'm gonna pass some of these around so you guys can take a look at them. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so here, here's the, uh, the bronze eye frog with the gamagatsu, and you can see it's got the popping mouth. Um, here's the original tournament frog from Snag Proof. I'll pass that one around. All right, before I get, let's see, what have I talked about? Okay, so here's, now here's a junior. I actually really like this little junior one. I think of, of the Spro ones, this is probably my favorite one, is uh, this little guy, and it's just a real good finesse. Here's the key with this one. You get on a mayfly hatch, that little guy right there is killer around the mayflies. You get all them brim and stuff, you know, sometimes you have to shake a tree a little bit and get those mayflies to fall down. And uh, it's just, it's, it's a perfect food chain situation. Um, the bluegills get to feeding on them mayflies and then you get to catching them. All right, when to throw a frog. 52 degrees um, is the coldest water I think I've ever actually paid attention to that I've caught a frogfish. And, it, and it's happened two times, uh, two situations. Um, and both of them have been out west, uh, um, you know, pretty much where I grew up. But uh, the California Delta, it was January, and it was, I don't know, maybe 48 degrees air temp. The water temp was 52. But the reason I caught those fish was, it was a low pressure system, lots of fog. The water was warmer the night. Um, and I worked that, I actually caught him on that frog right there, that white one. And I was walking that sucker so slow, just in place and letting it kill. And, and, and this time of the year, if you're gonna get a bite on a frog, I, and I can't say it's gonna happen out here, I don't know. I haven't even been here that, when the water's 52, just cause traveling tournaments. But if you get a situation like that, try it, but just make sure you walk it super, super slow. And, uh, they just come up and they literally suck it under. And it's, it, it, it's almost unnoticeable, the bites, but I was catching five and six pounders and you hardly even saw the bite. It was, it was one of the coolest frog fishing just because it was totally the wrong time of the year to do it. Bash you folks, information is pouring over. If you want to learn more about every lake, how to fish shallow deep in between, skipping docks and rocks and cranking, slow wiggling, chatter smattering, you get it at Bash U. Get on Bash U TV, check it out, sign up, be a member, be part of it folks, keep learning.